A beautiful, beautiful paper with a medium throughput platform sensitive to detect column barrier damage in intestinal bowel disease, IBD, that can also do live tear measurement. Let's take a look. They start with human colon tissue from three donors, then they isolate the cribs and stem cells and expand it to get enough colon spheroids, as they say. Next is dissociation of the spheroids to cell aggregates to seed in an organ chip. The chip has a top and a bottom channel and a porous membrane between them. The cells are seeded in the top channel to form a monolayer on top of the membrane and kept in static condition in proliferation and differentiation media in total for seven days. Of course, they characterize the epithelial layer to show there are mucus producing goblet cells, tight junctions and epithelial polarization. The cool thing is that they can measure tear live Okay, IBD. They stimulate IBD by TNF-alpha interferon gamma treatment. This tear heat map, two days after the stimulation, shows donor variability, differences between the cytokines, and oh man, the combination of the doses can do some damage. They look at the permeability of the model too. Okay, that's a lot of data, but the bottom line, again, donor variability, differences in the cytokine effects, and look, the system can detect differences in permeability of molecules with different sizes in a short amount of time, only six hours. At the end, IL-8 secretion as a response of the tissue inflammation. There is a lot to process here, especially IL-8 downregulates most of the time. You don't see this in cell lines, but apparently common if you use primary cells. Hmm. Something to think about when using cell lines. Conclusion, the model is very useful if you're looking for higher throughput, lower labor costs, and more sensitive measurements, and less headache with technical problems. Of course, there is always some. If you're looking for more complex biology, maybe look at other microphysiological systems. That was it. Follow us and stay tuned.